Hi guys, so today's just been kind of one of those days. Like, you know how sometimes you just get like so annoyed about things in general that I don't know, you just can't like everything like annoys you. That's what today was for me, pretty much. I mean, this is kind of, this kind of goes along with my previous video, but. Yeah. I mean, the whole TV thing. And I mean, don't get me wrong. People who use uh, streaming platforms and all. That's fine. I would probably use it too if I had enough money. But... And then it just... I kinda got to thinking about how some people just don't understand how mobile chargers work. And by that I mean like mobile battery packs. If you don't know what a mobile charger is, I can show you. And if you still don't know, look it up. Anyway. Anyway, mobile chargers. This is a mobile charger. If you don't know what it is or what it does, it's got, this one specifically has two little USB ports and that thing in the middle right there, you plug that in to your outlet when this gets low on juice and it charges it. This specific one lasts for about five hours. I think I have a video on these somewhere down there in my techie album thing. Um, but anyway, the two USBs, you just plug your phone in, press a button on here, phone automatically charges. You don't even have to plug this into the wall if you don't want to. Now you can, I mean, it has the little wall thing. I personally don't, I use that to plug it into the wall. Now, if you plugged this into the wall and then plugged your phone in, it would take longer to charge, but it would still charge which is why I don't usually plug this into the wall while I'm charging my phone. But anyway, it just, it just bugs me how some people don't necessarily know how to use one of these. I mean, I had offered to let somebody use this for like, however long they needed it, and they plug it into the wall, I try explaining to them, you don't have to. They ended up plugging their phone in somewhere else. I, I didn't even get a chance to explain how this worked. I mean, I tried. It just never got a chance. But... Yeah, so that kind of bugged me a little bit, and all of that just kind of put me in a kind of bum mood. But anyway, the main reason I'm kind of slightly annoyed, and the, well, the main current reason, I guess, is I'm, honest, honestly, I'm a cat person. A lot of you, uh, unless you've watched my 30 some odd questions video and I think gotten to the end, you might not have known that about me. Um, I am a cat person. I live with two dog people, also known as my parents. Um, they prefer dogs over cats. Now, Granted, I grew up with dogs, but I had my first and only cat when I was five. 
and she lived until she was 20, which was like five years ago, I guess. Three or five years ago, I think. Maybe four. Yeah, it was that was about like four years ago when she died. And I still kind of miss her. I've been trying to get my parents to let me get another cat, but it's just a constant fight over that because, I mean, when I had Annie, yes, I was five. Who's going to argue with a five-year-old at a birthday party who could possibly throw a fit or something? But it's just, you know, I'm 28 now. You would think that I know how to take care of pets. And, I mean, I take care of Darcy just fine. I mean, she gets her medicine every day. She gets her food every day. Twice a day, but still every day. Yes, I take her for walks. Do I, do I necessarily like it? Not necessarily, but, I mean, at least... At least she's going out for a walk. At least, like, every other day or so. She she even go, gets to go out to go to the bathroom. I play with her occasionally. Um, all of these, all of those things, yes. They might, you know, peg me as a dog person. Do I love dogs? I wouldn't say love, but... I mean, I tell her I love her, and I do, because, I mean, she's a dog, and she's my pet. And we all love our pets, right? But, honestly, if I had to choose between a dog and a cat, I, I would choose a cat. No offense to dogs or dog people. This is just me. My personal preference. Now, if I had to choose between any type of dog and just a dog, I would have to pick a golden. I, I mean, I like, I like all dogs. Goldens, though, they're my favorites. Um, people who know me, the people who know me, or who have known me, With just having Darcy, they might think, oh, Darcy's your favorite dog because, you know, well, that's because you've only really known me to have Darcy, but, I mean, my parents know what I'm like with other pets. They argue that I like dogs, that I love dogs, and... There's been, I guess, in their mind, proof that I love dogs and would prefer dogs because I grew up with Goldens and all. And, I mean, okay, Bridget was my first Golden. She died when I was 10. But she was 13 at the time. My parents had her for, like, about three years before I was born. So, technically, she was their dog. She was their dog. And then I come along, and she kind of, I guess, claims me as her kid. And, I mean, she was the first dog I ever knew, so, you know. Then, once Bridget dies, we go and get Maeve. Now, Maeve and I had that connection. We had, like, Maeve essentially picked me to be her kid. I loved Maeve, Maeve loved me. She was like my first official, like, my dog. And I loved her. But, at that point, this was like five years after we had gotten Annie, because I got Annie when I was five, and I got Maeve when I was ten. Bridget was about eight, maybe? Eight or nine? Bridget was about eight or nine when we got her. When we got Annie. But anyway, 
<clears throat> so I had Bridget. Bridget was my first dog. Five years later, we get Annie. That was my first ever cat. I loved cats. Annie was like my first pet ever, essentially. Then fast forward five years later, Bridget dies. Annie's now five years old. I'm 10. We get Maeve. Maeve is my dog. So now I have a cat and a dog. We're fine. I liked dogs, but I but Annie was my like was my first pet, so. And then fast forward about mm, about four years later, Maeve has her first litter of puppies. Her only litter of puppies. I'm about 13, 14 at the time. And all of the puppies go to good homes, except for one, which we kept. That was Grace. She, she was basically the family dog. She knew that, Grace knew that she was bottom of the totem pole and that she had to behave for everybody. But, so I think, I think it's just, and then like fast forward about 10 more years later. Maeve is now about 14 and a half. Grace is 10. At this point, Maeve had a pre-existing, had like a thyroid issue that she was on medication for. She was still healthy. It, it didn't, the thyroid thing didn't bother her really. And Grace had been diagnosed with intestinal cancer. That was kind of sad because, you know, you grow up with a dog, you're for like 10 years, that dog is, lives with you for like their entire life. And it's sad when you lose a family member, essentially. And so Maeve's 14 and a half, Grace is 10 with intestinal cancer. And after a while, Grace stops eating. Then a few days later, Maeve stops eating. And we were kind of watching Maeve because we knew it was getting close for her. So she ends up passing away in her sleep, which is like the most, in my mind, the most peaceful way one can go. I mean, I've never experienced that, but I mean, you're already asleep. So anyway. She dies, then that, that same day, like, she dies, like, that night, at, like, one in the morning. And so we then decide, okay, Grace has intestinal cancer. She's lived with Maeve her entire life. She's going to be heartbroken anyway. So we're just going to put her down. So we put her down. A month later, my cat dies. Of course, me. Did I cry? No. Should I have? Probably. I mean, with Maeve, we were expecting it anyway. You know, we were just watching because we knew she was getting close. So we were, we were emotionally ready. Grace, I guess we were emotionally ready. I mean, when I found out that Grace had cancer, yes, I, I cried because I knew that was hard. I, I'm still still getting choked up about it because, I mean, it was my dog. Or at least one of my dogs. But, but yeah, we put them down. And then months later, my cat dies. Did I cry when she died? No. I didn't because, I mean, the girls had died like the month before, so, and she was 20, so she was getting a little senile, and I kind of figured, you know, hey, she's 20, that's old for a cat. Then, but two days after Maven Grace died, we get Darcy, and that was great. I mean, my dad got attached, like, I guess almost right away. Me? I was like, oh, it's a puppy. But my mom was just like, eh, yeah, yeah, eh. 
I mean, my mom's warmed up to her now, but. I mean, it's just, I'd, I'd honestly rather have a cat. I mean, nothing against dogs, but with dogs, you know, you've got to take them for a walk. you got to get their food. You've got to get them a whole bunch of toys. I swear, I have, like, I got Darcy, like, at least 30 toys. And she's torn, and she's put holes in, like, maybe five or ten of them. So I've been basically replacing her toys, essentially. And, I mean, you got food, you got toys, you gotta go for walks, you gotta get, you know, crate. You have to get, you know, have to go through obedience school, you have to go through, like, vet stuff, like vet bills, and, you know, training, and leashes, and collars, and that's like eight things right there that you have to shell out money for. Whereas with a cat, all you really need is cat food, litter box, water, but I mean, you can use tap water, um, some toys. I mean, yes, you gotta train them, but I mean, vet bills. Need vet bills, so that's like, but I mean, you only have to go like to the vet for your cat like once a year, uh, unless your cat has, unless said cat has like special needs or something. But you know, just a general healthy cat, you only really have to go like once a year. I mean, if you have, um, if you have the Savannah cat, then you can train them to walk on a leash. So. In that instance, yes, you would have to have a leash and a harness, but but that's like six things for the cat. Whereas the dog, you have like ten things that you gotta keep shelling out for. Oh, you get, you even have to have a dog bed if you want a dog bed. So a dog is more of an investment than a cat, and cats live longer. So yeah. I think this is why I prefer cats over dogs, because, I mean, really, all you gotta do, I mean, you can, you can bathe them if you want, but, I mean, they're gonna fight you on it, because <laughs> cats and water don't very, get along very well, unless your cat loves water, in which case, yay, but, yeah, cats are just less time and energy spent with a cat as opposed to a dog. And also with the dog in regards to vet bills, if your dog chews, eats something, like Darcy loves socks. She loves socks. She loves anything she can get her mouth on. She hasn't chewed up a shoe yet. She hasn't chewed up a shoe yet, which is great, but she has eaten a bunch of my socks and pooped them out and puked them out. She did eat one dog, one of them. My dad socks once. That was just a horrible experience. And he, he wears the mid-calf sock kind of socks. That got stuck in her intestine, so I had to take her to the vet. That that was just horrible for her, because, I mean, oh, she still eats socks, but she eats my socks now more than she would eat dad, my dad's socks, because my socks are the ankle socks, and they... I'd rather she not eat the socks, but if she, but since she does, I'd rather she eat my socks as opposed to my dad's socks or any other socks because their socks get into the peop into their intestines. It's not good. She was puking up, like I think for a day or two. That was not good. That was not a fun experience for her. Thankfully, she's learned from, thankfully, she's kind of learned from that, but still, that was a vet bill. They wanted us to go to the emergency vet and pay, like, $3,500 for that. We were still getting over Grace's vet bill. And 
Uh, we decided against that since we were still getting over the other vet stuff. And then we went back to our vet and they were just like, just give her three stool softeners. Just go like to the convenience store or something, get like the $10 stool softeners and give her three of those. Like, you know, three little capsules. So we were like, okay. So we did that. She pooped it out. Like my mom did that like the next morning. She pooped it. She pooped out that sock like the next, like later that night. And I mean, that was great because we didn't have to pay $3,500, but still with a cat, I mean, cats aren't going to eat your socks. They're not going to steal your remote. They're not going to you know, do anything bad. I mean, the most they'll do is maybe knock over a plant or two. Might even attack your feet or your hands. I mean, I've got scars on my hands from Annie. I'm sure I've got like tiny pinprick scars from her attacking my feet when she was little, but, but I mean, yeah, I mean, we didn't, Annie never really wore a collar, so we didn't have to worry about getting a collar for her. Because, I mean, she hated collars. She was half wild. We tried putting a collar on her, like, twice. And she, the first time, like, she went, we put a collar on her, she went out, she wandered off, came back, collar was gone. Tried it again, same thing happened. She went outside, spent, like, three days there, came back, collar was nowhere to be seen. So we just never put a collar on her. She always came back, though. I mean, and we only really took her to get her rabies shot. That was it. We never declawed her because she was half wild. And really that's like a whole bunch of, there's no, there's no valid reason for you to declaw your cat. I mean, you can, if you want, and yes, it would keep the cat from scratching and clawing at you. And it would save you the pain, but it's horrible for the cat because they can't defend themselves if they're declawed. B, it, it makes them have to rely on their back legs more because, I mean, they can't because that would like be the only way or the only way they'd have claws is their back legs. So you get arthritic from that. And it's just, it's just horrible. Cause like, okay, that declawing a cat, you know how you have nails on your, like, you know, right there, declawing a cat. They're basically like cutting off this first joint. That's just, no, you, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want this part of your finger taken off. You couldn't really do anything. You wouldn't be able to open baggies. You wouldn't be able to do anything. I mean, you'd still be able to do stuff, but nails are great. So yeah, that just puts a whole, uh, that's just bad for the cat. And yeah, but anyway, if you've gotten to this point, please comment whether you're a cat or a dog person and I will see you guys later. Bye.